Welcome to the last video of chapter 5, which is section 6, the quadratic formula and the discriminant. This should be a review. Quadratic formula is going to be used to solve quadratic equations. So that's what we'll be doing throughout this whole chapter. And we've learned three methods so far. The first one was factoring. We also looked at the square root method. And lastly, we talked about completing the square. For all three of these methods, they work in very specific situations. So there are certain quadratic equations where you can factor, but you can't use the square root method. Sometimes you can complete the square so that you can use the square root method. There's some quadratic equations, though, that these three methods don't work for, that they're, or at least not easily. That's where the quadratic formula is going to come into play. So this is one that you've learned before. It's x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And remember, this is for an equation like ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. If you remember, there's a song that goes along with it, the opposite of b plus or minus the square root. Not a good singer, so I'm not going to finish it for you. But that is one way to remember the formula. This will work for every quadratic. Every quadratic. When should you use it, though? When you can't use methods one to three above. So let's look at example number one. Does this factor? Well, we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 10 and add to eight. Nope, not two numbers that do that. Can we use the square root method? No, we have an x squared and an x. Could we complete the square? this point, no, because we have a number out in front of the x squared. So I could divide the 2, but then I'd have a fraction with that 5 halves. So in this case, we can see methods 1 through 3 aren't our best option. So we're going to use the quadratic formula. The number in front of x squared is a, number in front of x is b, and then the last number without an x is c. So we get x equals the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, got to remember our order of operations. Order of operations, exponents comes first. So we get that 8 squared is 64. I'm also going to do my multiplying. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 3. 5 is 40. So then I get 24. So you're always going to have to do this stuff underneath the square root first. This point is where students make makes mistakes sometimes. We cannot divide by 4 yet. The square root of 24 and the 4 are not like terms. So do not divide by 4. We have to simplify first. So 24 is 4 times 6. Square root of 4 is 2. So this becomes negative 8 plus or minus 2 root 6 over 4. Now we can simplify. You can remember drawing a heart here. That shows you what to simplify. So the 6 we're not concerned about. But the 8, 2, and 4, we can divide by 2. And we get negative 4 plus or minus root 6 all over 2. Now let's make sure. How many answers do we have? 2. So we get negative 4 plus root 6 over 2 and negative 4 minus root 6 over 2, which makes sense with that x squared. Okay, so hopefully that refreshed your brain a little bit. You have this example to try. So I want you to try that example. I am going to go through an extra example. If you want to fast forward through this extra example, you can. If you want to pay attention, you also can do that as well. So this next example is optional. Um, you do have more um, past this in the video, though, so don't stop the video just yet. Okay, got to move everything over to the same side. So we get x squared plus 7x plus 20 equals 0. Can't use the square root method. Uh, we can't factor this. 
we could complete the square, but we're going to end up with fractions. So we're going to do the quadratic formula. Again, a is in front of the x squared, b and c. So we get x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we get negative 7 plus or minus, remember everything underneath the square root has to come first. I get 49 minus, 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 20 is 80. Forty-nine minus eighty is negative thirty-one. Negative means you're going to have an i, so we can't simplify that square root anymore except for the i. So we get negative seven plus or minus i root thirty-one over two. So it is possible still to get imaginary solutions. You can get imaginary solutions with the quadratic formula. Okay, at this point, please try this you try it problem if you haven't done that already. If it's completed, then we're ready to move on. Last thing we need to talk about this with this video is something called the discriminant. So as I said, with the quadratic formula, you could get real solutions, you could get imaginary solutions. How can we tell? Well, it's the stuff underneath the square root that will tell us. If the stuff underneath the square root is negative, then we're going to have imaginary solutions. If the stuff underneath the square root is positive, we won't. So the discriminant is the part underneath square root tells us the number and types of roots. Okay, so we're gonna determine the number and type of roots for example two. I'm not telling you to solve, we're not solving. We're gonna set up though. So if we were to set up, we would get 11 plus or minus the square root of negative 11 squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Again, this is what I care about though. So we're going to focus on that. We get 121 minus 4 times 7 is 28. We get 28 times 5. 28 times 5 is 140. So we get negative 19. Negative underneath the square root means we're going to have imaginary solutions. How many of them are we going to have? Well, we have this 11 plus or minus. And so it's going to be 11 plus or minus something over 14. So we're going to have an imaginary solutions and two of them. All right, so sometimes you're not going to want to solve the whole equation. You just want to know how many solutions there are. You're going to know that based on uh, what's underneath the square root. So what's underneath the square root will tell you how many solutions you're going to get. Okay, so that was this video. If you have any questions, please make sure you write them down and bring them to class.